Good morning, everyone. April the 2nd in the year 2019. Before we begin this morning, I want to take you to the book of Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him, for their watchmen. If when he sees the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. If he heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman sees the sword come and blows not the trumpet, and the people are not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. And from the King James Version Bible, Ezekiel 33, verses 1 through 6. Good morning, YouTube, my beautiful, wonderful, glorious, simple, amazing, fascinating, Holy Spirit-filled, Bible-believing, God-fearing, Philadelphia Bride, Harpazo, Rapture Ready, Precious. Brothers and sisters, gather around this morning and pull up a chair. Let me know what are you going to share. You got the pets inside? Let me know what you're going to share with PD as we begin this morning together. I've got my coffee with cream, no sugar. How do you take your coffee? Do you drink coffee? Do you put cream in your coffee, sugar? Do you take your coffee black? Are you going to have some herbal tea? Makes you feel a lot better. Some lemonade. Iced tea, sweet tea. Oh, I want to go down south. Sweet tea. Let me know in the comment section below. I want to cover a couple of things uh, this morning with all of you, beloved. I love you all so much, so much. The devil is trying to kill me. The devil is trying to seek, kill, and destroy me. And this ministry he does not like what this YouTube channel stands for because I try my very best to bring the truth. A lot of things have happened over a course of a, a couple of months and it all began, it all began when God, it was his timing and he opened the doors for us to have that house of worship in the city of Flint, a house of worship, a house of healing and a house of deliverance where the homeless could come in and sit among the fellowship as they did last Sunday and hear the word of God. Could sit right up front in the front row. And this has made the devil furious. He's been on a vicious attack. Uh, he's been out to try to uh, stop me every step of the way. And I want to take you back to right at the time but I made the announcement that uh, Father God, it was his timing. It wasn't my timing. It was his timing. The timing was right. It was God's timing to open up our, our brand new church. And that was in February. And if you notice behind me, the wall was full. It was full. Every month the wall gets full of cards from my viewers and subscribers. So I have to take the cards down to make room for more because so many of you send me just loving words of encouragement and help and offerings with our ministry. And I believe it was in the beginning of March we had opened the church that I had taken all of the cards down. I just checked, I think it was uh, the first week of March. Here we are April 2nd and there's two cards on the wall. One from uh, Sister Nancy and then one last night uh, from uh, Sister uh, uh, Lisa, who we're praying for. A lot of things happened. The devil went on 
a ferocious attack. The offerings came to a screeching halt after we held out. We trying to raise much needed funds for our brand new church to pay up the security deposits. So we did uh, our 12 days of fire, Holy Spirit revival, and that infuriated the devil. It just infuriated him uh, that we could get caught up on our uh, uh, much needed funding to keep that house of worship afloat. And we met the need, and then right after that, uh, all the offerings just came to a screeching halt, a screeching stop. They just all pretty much stopped to the point where uh, I am today grounded. I'm sitting here, and uh, we re I, I really don't uh, want to take the vehicle out so I can get the maintenance done on it. I got a maintenance with a wrench. Like in our chat room, when you're a moderator, you got the little wrench. The little wrench light is on in my car. And I don't even know there's any oil in the car. All of the offerings have came to a screeching halt. And this is what the devil is doing. He's trying to stop me. He's furious that uh, now we have a place uh, of worship. So he is really out to, to stop this ministry. And it was during our live stream, if you remember, that someone had, uh, this is how the devil works, someone had and watching our live stream and made a call to the uh, uh, police department, a 911 call, pretending to be me, saying that I killed my wife and I shot her. And she was lying dead on the floor and I was about to kill my children. And it was during the live stream. But um, I had taken a break and I had put up a video for you guys to watch that I get a call and it's the Grand Blank Police Department. They're telling me to come out with my hands up and not to make any sudden moves. So I did what they said and Christy went with me so they could see that I didn't kill her. She's right here. This is the devil trying to kill me. And we went out and it was icy. This was February. We went out and it was icy. And I'm afraid if I slip on the ice, it's going to be a sudden move and they're going to shoot and kill me or kill my wife. So some of the devil came into that chat room using a person. He uses people to do this swatting and by the grace of God and believing and having faith, everything was okay. They raided our home and found out that, uh, no, I didn't kill my wife, that we were the victim because we were live streaming, a church service of all things, that we were live streaming, um, that we were, we had fallen victim to what's known as a swatting. Very dangerous, my wife and I, we could have been killed. And it was during that time that there was conflict in the uh, live chat room. There would be one person. We'll talk about that this evening on, on our live stream. But was questioning at the same time, do I ever, uh, I never put out a call to an altar call. I don't ever ask people if they're saved, which I do. So I'm seeing this in the corner of my eye, this conflict. Then talking about, do I have a baptismal at, at our church? Which we do. I have gone to Detroit, Michigan to baptize a precious sister at her home with her family present. And gave her a certificate of baptism. I've held uh, baptisms in Holly State Recreational Area down at the beach. But our new church has our, our house of worship, the room we worship in, our chapel. We have a full working cafeteria a full working kitchen, and a baptismal. But I'm seeing all this conflict and strife going on, and uh, it's it's frustrating me because I'm trying to preach. I'm trying to get a message across. And right now, I want to apologize to each and every one of my viewers for the frustration. It's the devil coming in. It's one person that came in. You're no, you never do uh, an altar call. You never put out a call to salvation. And I'm seeing this out of the corner of my eye while I'm trying to talk. You don't baptize anyone. Your church doesn't have a baptismal. So that went on and the offering stopped, came to a screeching halt. And then in another live stream, I'm seeing more. I'm seeing more conflict. Um, one person was going to do this and then, oh, well, Flint is a dangerous area. And I'm seeing all this live stream before last again 
there was strife in the room and it's it was one person one person when i'm looking out of the corner of my eye one person is in there just kind of like i think pushing my buttons a little bit and i'm and, and here I, I believe i'm taking it out on all of you which i apologize and i ask and i beg forgiveness because it's one person that kept interrupting i had mentioned numerous times numerous numerous times that monday this is the live stream before last night but april 1st everyone in the warming center the homeless are out on the street they're out on the street with nowhere to go so i'm trying to do a, a sermon and it's one person again one person out of the corner of my eye i guess pd doesn't want my help i guess he doesn't want me to help him so I'm going to get all of the uh, supplies ready from Wisconsin and I'm going to send them to the warming center. I'm looking on the corner of my eye. I, I can't believe how many times have I said there's no more warming center. So now here we are last night and it began again. And I'm here. I am a watchman on the wall. I've been a watchman on the wall for a long time. And when I see the story coming, I'm going to warn the people. Yes, most of us are born again. We're awake. But what about the few? What about the babes in Christ that may have came in to our live stream last night that aren't awake, that they think everything is fine? The world is evil at best. There are dangers. There's pedophilia. There's child rape and molestation. Missing and exploited children. People vanishing. Human trafficking going on and terrible things going on in the world we need to be aware that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against spiritual wickedness evil in high places there's a that is evil in the spiritual realm but again i want to thank um you know we got uh uh brother richard gave an offering and then last night lisa uh, who's having her own uh, uh but god's working in her situation with flooding and then the, the beautiful card from Nancy, but all of our our offerings have stopped, have just came to a screeching halt. And that's because so many of you do what you can. So many of you do what you can. And also the devil comes in. The devil comes in and he this is what his plan is. So I just wanted to draw everyone's attention. I'm not gonna stop. I'm not gonna throw in the towel. I'm not going to be discouraged. I'm going to follow the Holy Spirit. I'm going to follow God's commands, what he places on my heart. If I can't continue the ministry, maybe it wasn't meant to be. I'll go back to the way things were before I started. I'll go back to how things were eight years ago before I started. If I can't keep the church afloat um, and it sinks, I'll go ahead and... Uh, let them uh, take take the, the the property from me and then uh, take me to court and uh, I have that blemish on my uh, on my uh, um, on my credit. Uh, it, it is what it is. It's uh, I'm here to bring the truth. I'm here for the lost to come and see that uh, we need to fear God. We need to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. I'm here to shine light on the darkness. I'm here to let the world know. Don't be in fear of the things that are coming. I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture of the church. I'm here to show you that there is hope and that hope is Jesus Christ. And we need to call on him because there is an event going to happen and it's going to happen at any time now very quickly called the rapture of the church and, and, and the body of true believers, the true bride in the end days will be taken and a lot of things are going to happen on this world like the world in this world like the world has never seen and will never see again and god will pour out its coming his wrath and his judgment but being homeless myself with my family that's my passion it's my heart i know that i know that i know that god took me to that place of homelessness so i could be the one in the hot sun with a weather-beaten face, the people spit upon, the people on their way to church on a Sunday would scream at me, you bum, go get a job. I was with a homeless gentleman at the warming center 
last Sunday. And when I explain my story, all I can do is hold it. When I told him, I know, brother, I've been in your shoes. I couldn't do this if I wasn't. I was spit upon and I was told that I'm just a lazy piece of garbage told me to go get a job after I worked all day in the hot sun with my wife. And he was sobbing because it touched him at the very core. So I know what the homeless are going through. I've been there, been there, and I've done that. And this is my passion. And today, we'll, nothing has come in. We're, we're pretty much grounded. I am going to go to... Uh, walk up to my wife's work and borrow her car and pick up from sister um, Becky who lives in Burton, Michigan. She's got some clothing and food and um, try to distribute that and borrow the wife's car today. But it's okay. The devil, you are not going to kill me. You are not going to stop me. You are not going to destroy this ministry or this YouTube channel. I'm going to fight the good fight of faith. I'm a soldier and I'm bold, let me tell you, in the end days. I'm a bold soldier for the Lord. And some of you wonder why does Pastor Dave wear the beret? Why do you wear that beret, Pastor Dave? Because I'm in I'm in the army of God. And I'm on the front lines. I will not be moved and I will not be stopped. I love you guys, and I'm gonna try to do our live stream tonight. Got a lot of time on my hands. I love you. God bless you. God bless your family. And I pray for those that have family and loved ones that are not saved. Preach in season, out of season. Preach the word of God. Plant the seeds of faith. It's all about him. I love you guys. I'll see you. Hopefully I'll see you tonight.